Hey guys, it's Lydia here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I upgraded my Ortor laser to this massive new laser. So, let's get started. Alright guys, so I'm super excited to show you how I turned this laser into how big it is, how I did it, and letting you guys know each step that I took to get to where I am to have this awesome new big laser to use. So let's get right into the video. I've made some time lapses and did some voiceovers for you guys to tell you what I'm doing in each of the time lapse and hopefully you enjoy it. Alright, so the first thing I did was of course uh, disassemble this little Ortor laser. Um, I just unscrewed everything, basically did the opposite of what I did when I assembled it. Um, but this time I did actually have to disassemble the x-axis, so um, I tried my best to take as many pictures before I disassembled it so that I made sure I put everything back to the way that it was before, but obviously with these longer rails. So now with my dad I had to figure out um, that I actually had to trim down two of the rails that would be going on the x-axis because technically there's three different sizes. Um, once I did that I decided to just try fit my um, x-axis part here and then start assembling with the rod now this rod was actually 3 16 which is just a little bit less than five millimeters um, but I made it work with some uh, tape and then I started assembling it here so I actually had to drill um, and do my best to tap um, these the middle holes that were in these rails because they did not come pre-tapped and for some reason they were not the exact size as the other ones were even though they were 2020 extrusion um, and I also did realize that I bought the wrong extrusion so I didn't buy the V groove slot I just bought the T, T slot so that's why I had a little bit of struggle trying to get the rails to go smoothly but I eventually got the wheels to go on there right and then here I'm just adding my new belt and I ordered a um, roll of 5 meter, sorry this is a bit blurry here but it will be fixed in a second. Um, I ordered a roll of 5 meter uh, belt for about $10 on Amazon so that was super nice. Something easy and quick that I could get as soon as possible. Uh, so I just added all of the rails to, um, or all of the belts to each side to my best that I could get them to and s as tight as possible. So next here, um, this is where I actually had to basically hand tap each of these side parts with, um, I drilled it out a little bit and then I slowly uh, drilled in a screw to tap it with, and I also used um, some oil to make sure that I did it slowly. And I just got it to enough to where I could screw in a short screw to make sure that the actual laser was pretty stable. It was, again, a hard time to figure it out, but I did eventually get it. I also did it here, as you can see, to the x-axis and then added in my belts. Um, I did have to fidget a little bit with the actual bracket for the x-axis with the wheels, again, because they weren't sitting flush and even because it wasn't a um, V-groove rail, uh, but I, again, eventually got it and um, mostly everything was set by now. So now all I had to do was extend the wires. So I just grabbed these two sets of wires so that's actually a green and a brown and then a yellow and a brown. And so I basically split the wires, I cut them in half and then extended them with this. Made sure I used heat shrink on everything and then heat shrink them all together. I actually did run into a little bit of a problem um, where two of the wires were not correct, which is, I found that out when I, attempted to home the machine um, so always make sure you are doing a good job of wiring and resoldering make sure everything is super clean before you close it up and you won't have the same problem that I did so it actually took me maybe an hour to extend all the wires I had to extend I think a total of four wires the x-axis the y-axis um, one of the wires that connects to the main board and then to the um, board that connects the the laser to it on the x-axis um, so again it was super easy just again make sure you do a clean job and then I taped up as much as I could here to um, connect the wires and make them less messy um, and then as you can see here I'm doing the um, actual laser wire which was super simple it only had three wires just had to make sure that everything was connecting to the correct wire each time instead of mixing it up which would have um, had a problem with the positive and negative ends of the actual or each of the wires 
And finally here, I grabbed or went and bought from Home Depot some tubing, wire cover tubing. And that probably took me a good 45 minutes to get everything covered. Um, there was actually two sizes in this uh, pack that I bought. And then I used a bunch of zip ties to make sure everything was connected right. Um, I will actually leave a link to the um, wire covers that I bought from Home Depot down below in the description. So finally, um, I decided to create a little mount here for my air assist vacuum. And um, it was pretty simple. Um, and I also built a frame for the actual laser, which I didn't show because it was basically just a simple frame, um, just so it could sit on it. As you can see here, it's a walnut frame. And then, as you can see, everything is connected, put together, and um, as neat as possible as I could get it. And I just did a couple tests to make sure everything moved evenly. All right, so this is a quick overview. Uh, I mentioned that I made this base here, and you can see it is a walnut base. Now, I wanted to use that because that was really the only um, long length boards we had. So basically, it's one board here, another one evenly across, and then it's uh, connected here. And if I show you down here, it's actually connected through dowels. So there's two dowels in each of the sides. Um, and then also I put these little feet on here to hold the actual laser in place. And as I stand up here, you can see definitely how big it is um, right next to my computer. And it's actually pretty large. Again, here are the wires. Um, I try to clean them up as best as possible. Um, everything's as clean as possible. Now, I'm not sure how I'm going to figure out if I can keep this off of the base here, um, but it doesn't really get in the way, so I might as well just leave that. Also, again, here is the compressor, um, the little fish tank compressor that I have connected to my air assist, which is down here. This air assist, um, the link for it will be down below in the description. It's super simple. It actually prints in a couple pieces, and then you put your um, 3D printer nozzle in there, and then you put the tube in it, and then you can bend it to um, be right on your laser. It's very awesome and it uh, definitely cuts things a lot easier and faster. I will also leave a link to the video of the man who made this, uh, the 3D print creator. He also made a YouTube video on it, so I'll leave that down below also. And the only thing I have concerned about this laser is this rod here. Like I mentioned, it is about 0.2 millimeters too small. It is not evenly 5 millimeters, it is 4.7. And so as you can see, I mentioned earlier that I taped it a little bit so that it would actually um, be able to sit in there. But uh, for now, it works. But the only thing is it it's kind of bendy here, and that's probably because it's so long. So if you decided to make a bigger version and it was probably shorter than this, it would definitely not be a problem. Um, that's just one thing I'm worried about about it. But other than that, uh, this is the setup. Now, I didn't decide to put an entire piece of wood for the bottom here because uh, a lot of the things that I like to do is engrave. And, um, for example, I make stove toppers, and they're about this size. So being able to just set that in the middle of this work area makes it a lot easier instead of having to have an actual base and then adjust the height of the actual laser. So that's one reason why it's just a perimeter structure here. But again, this is the entire laser and it's pretty big. All right guys, so that is it for this video. Um, I had so much fun making this. There's lots of ups and downs definitely, but I finally got to this thing working again and it's super awesome and definitely super big. It actually overhangs on over my two tables that I have here, as you guys could see in the last clip. Now, some of you might be concerned, uh, which a lot of people are about the air ventilation stuff in this room so this room has no windows but there is a shop right next door which you guys have seen me work in before we do have a ventilation system in there and then we also do have a window in there so the windows always open the ventilation system is always on and i always have two fans on going on in here while i'm engraving or cutting or whatever and i also again have my air assist now hooked up so that also um, prevents a little bit more smoke um, but I always do take my safety precautions. I always have my glasses on when this thing's running. So don't worry about that. I am staying safe. Even though it's now a bigger machine, that doesn't mean that things change about it. It is still the same powerful laser that was on the little one, just with a bigger surface. Um, I also mentioned, I posted a couple of, um, photos and videos on my Instagram. Um, my Twitter and also the Facebook group for Oratory Lasers. So if you're not part of that group, definitely go join it if you have this awesome laser. 
Um, I posted about this laser being so big, but that doesn't quite mean I'm going to be engraving or cutting something that large. It's mostly for my larger projects that I'm going to be engraving on. So for example, like I talked about my stovetop covers, they're about 21 inches and that was a little bit too big for the original size of the laser. So I actually had to lift it up um, so that the piece of wood uh, would be the base for the laser so the laser would actually be sitting on that and I didn't really like that so now with this setup the actual 21 inch by 21 inch board can sit in that area and then it can engrave on it like that so it's a super simple setup now and uh, I think it's a lot more easier for me so that's another reason again why I made it so big and um, I made the huge leap of going from 400 millimeters to a thousand to nine hundred millimeters so if you want to do this to your project or to your laser I will leave the link to all the rails down below again um, I will be leaving the link to the correct rails not the ones that I bought because I bought the T slots not the V groove so like I mentioned the uh, wheels weren't going the way they should have and there wasn't enough room for the rails to fit so I had to kind of mess with that a little bit but if you buy the V groove uh, rails you'll have no problem with that and um, just be ready to tap your screws because um, I'm not 100% sure if the V groove rails will have the correct diameter um, circle or middle part uh, hole for making the screws because I actually did have to um, increase the size of the screws so that I would actually have something to screw in the legs on the sides and the actual rails together. I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but um, it took a little bit of trial and error. Uh, but that is how it goes in the shop, I guess. So if you guys have any questions on how I did something, please let me know down below in the comments. Uh, I do try my best to answer every comment that is um, listed down there. You can also DM me on Instagram or Twitter. I always answer those if you have any questions specifically about my setup that I have. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you didn't see the original review on the original Orator laser, please go check that out on my channel. I will also leave a link to that in the description for you. There will be lots of links, so don't forget to look in the description if you are looking for something that's mentioned in the video. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.